Good evening. We want to start with something different tonight. A roll call of sorts, a sea of faces, beautiful kids, survivors. They're typical kids, freckles, glasses, braces, even some bashful smiles as they reel off the names of prescription drugs they shouldn't be able to pronounce. As you both know, we have been working for a year on this investigation at ABC News. The use of heavy-duty psychotropic drugs given to America's foster children. As a new governmental report says, sometimes even infants. And of course, these are children already traumatized by abuse, neglect, and abandonment who tell us what they most want is an adult who will love them and take their hand for life. We want to say at the outset, sometimes drugs can be useful, but should this be the first response? And what about the sheer quantity of pills the children are being given, often without the therapy they say they crave? Here's the question. Is there something else we owe these children who have already endured so much? My name is Roger Jr. I am nine years old. When I was moving from home to home, I felt sad because no one would keep me or love me. I were in 28 homes. Somehow we keep marching on. I used to like sneak some dog food and stuff, and I'd eat out of the garbage sometimes because I was like really hungry. Somehow we'll keep moving on. I had huge bruises and welts and scars from the beatings that I got. My name is Brooke and I'm seven. These are the meds that I've been taking since I was four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I was on Depakote, Seroquel, and some other ones I cannot name off the top of my head right now. Uh, some of them for, were for ADHD. I am not ADHD, I'm just naughty. One was for being bipolar. I am not bipolar at all. I was four whenever I started taking meds. Seroquel XR, Adderall. Lexapro. This one is Shotera. Respiral. The last one is Abilify. They made me feel as if I had a thousand bricks on my head. I was prescribed seven or eight different pills. I gained almost or over a hundred pounds. Just mixing all the medications together, just I was just a zombie. My name is Crystal, I'm 15. I have been in 26 placements. I feel like I have almost disappeared from everybody's point of view. I was put on three different medicines when I first went into foster care at age of six. Ever since then, they've just been piling up more medicine. The reason why I was that was so, so like always mad and upset all the time was because I didn't really have anybody to talk to. I told my adoptive mom and dad that I went off these meds. They don't make me feel right. You feel like the meds are taking over your whole body. Now that I don't take these pills, I feel free. Since I'm not taking any more medication, I feel as if I am in control of myself and no one else is. I'm doing very well. I got the honor roll three times in a row. It is not right. You people that are over medicating the children, you should stop it right now. What I really want people to know is that you can make it through the process as I have. Even though you're in foster care, you should never give up and always have hope. If you look at little Brooke today, it's impossible to imagine that this was Brooke before. A seven-year-old child, just 43 pounds, given five mind-altering psychotropic drugs prescribed for serious mental disorders. To deal with her eruptions of anger, her foster parents were told to take her to a mental health clinic where their solution was medication, including Seroquel, which is often used for schizophrenia. And they added Seroquel. 
Within a few weeks, they decided that it wasn't working. They needed to do something else. At this point, she's getting worse. She's not getting any better. And then she was given more medication and more. Ten drug changes in just four months. Frequently, the clinic increased the doses. Brooke's older sister, Kayla, watched in anguish. I don't know how they could possibly help children if all they do is just give the children meds and it, it makes the children feel out of place. But her yeah. foster mother, Lisa, felt she had no choice, worried the state would take the children away if she didn't give the medication. We were told to put our faith in the system and that's what we did. They kept saying she needs more medications. That's how sad it is. The meds make us think. Tantrums are good. It gets your anger out. But no, it doesn't. More sadness for two girls who had already been dealt a hand from hell. Taken from a mother who had a long record of drug dealing and prostitution and uprooted again and again. As Little Brooks' drug doses and wild behavior increase, Lisa decides to record the rages. And this could have gone on year after year if Lisa hadn't decided to pay for a private outside doctor, psychiatrist Dr. Louis Quinones, who was stunned by the pills Brooke was taking. The first thing we got to think about is the medicine causing this. There always has to be a high index of suspicion when we're using these agents. Brooke is now being weaned off all her medication. What are you feeling right now? Good. Do you feel it anywhere special or? My heart. My tummy. My legs. Do you have a refrigerator? Uh, yes, we do. Brooke still has a lot of demons left to wrestle from the life she's lived, but she's learning to heal one day at a time. What's another choice over a tantrum? What's a good choice? Hug you. What do you do? What are you doing right now? No, what do you do? Yeah, you hug all the anger out, right? Dear God, I want to be a vet in a place and a firefighter. When a doctor tells me that the drug is working, I would ask, who's it working for? Is it working for the caretaker? Is it working for the system? It only matters to me whether it's working for the kid. Michael Perino, who runs one of the biggest advocacy organizations in the country for foster kids, says too often the first reaction to any problem with the child is a drug. But when we read that foster kids are medicated up to 13 times more yeah. than other kids, is it because they're, they are a more troubled population? They are troubled. If you've been hurt the way these kids are, you or I would feel the same way. We would be angry. We would be upset. We would act out. The answer isn't to always try to change their brain chemistry. And it's known that many of these drugs have serious side effects, tremors, irreversible tics, and weight gain leading to diabetes. Not to mention the stories the children tell us of feeling they're in a kind of chemical prison. Take a look at a little boy named Keontae. Those are his screams behind the bedroom door. Like so many other foster children, Keontae had already suffered. His mother's neglect. At four, he was left alone to take care of his little sister. And after that, he says, he was abused, beaten. When he arrived at the home of Scott and Carol Cook, they discovered he had been given 12 different drugs in foster care. Not only Seroquel, since he was six years old, but the antidepressant Lexapro and Depakote for mood stabilization. He came straight from the hospital to us. Um, we gave him his meds that night, and 4 a.m. in the morning, I get up, and he's walking fast in circle in his bedroom, around and around and around. It just made me feel wild and weird. Uh, some of them were for ADHD. I'm not ADHD. I'm just naughty. <laughs> this is Chianti at 10 years old trying to come off all the medication. Is it hard to watch that? Sort of. That once was me. It felt great pity for that one kid, that kid. He was just hurt, and he needed the right attention and, to be honest, the right therapy. But can the states afford to pay for the can therapy? They, can they afford not to? Can they afford to have kids who are on all these medications? What's the future going to be for them? These young people have a right to be safe and well cared for. 
That's the promise the state makes when it takes them out of their homes. And that promise is too often not met. And today, life is very different for Keontae. Off all the medications, in therapy, he's in some honors classes, and he now has a permanent family to help him heal. He's been adopted. Scott and Carol Cook celebrated with a party. Now you're part of the family. <laughs> and no, no getting out of it. And remember little Brooke? She too has something to heal the broken places. Brooke and her sister Kayla have also been adopted. Here they are with Lisa, Dad, and all their new brothers. 